So I'm here at the Colosseum in Rome and what better place on earth is there for a camera comparison battle between three champions? The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max and that's what you're seeing right now and also use this intro video as a good microphone test and compare them to each other to see which one sounds the best in this noisy situation. And then there's the newest of the three, the Nothing Phone 2. Now, when they released the Nothing Phone 2, Carl Pei went on record saying that this phone can stand up to any flagship right now. And that's why I've chosen the other two champions in this video, because they're the top two selling flagships right now. And I'm genuinely interested to see if the Nothing Phone 2 is capable of standing up to two devices that are nearly two times the price. So anyway, I'm going to try and blag my way into the Coliseum today. We don't have tickets. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in there or not, but certainly going to try. And if you like camera comparisons and things like that, make sure you subscribe, notifications on for more content like this. Anyway, let's start the battle. In this camera comparison, the focus is mainly going to be on the Nothing Phone 2, as there are 10,000 videos out there comparing the iPhone 14 to the Galaxy S23, so you don't need to see another one of those. What's interesting about this camera comparison is the fact that the Nothing Phone 2 got a big camera update on the day this video was shot in mid-August 2023. And I wasn't joking about not having tickets to get into the Coliseum. And here's a little bit of travel advice for you guys if you ever visit Rome. Make sure you book in advance and pay for a good tour guide and a full arena tour. I paid a small fortune and the tour guide told me three things and then f***ed off. Anyway, let's kick this off with a little bit of HDR video footage from inside the world's most ancient arena. An interesting fact, the Colosseum could sit around 80,000 people inside. And when you compare that to the O2 Arena in London that seats 20,000, yeah, that's pretty impressive. So here's the first photo and you probably noticed the subtle differences between the three phones in this well-lit setting. Yes, it's relatively minimal and that's likely because the camera AI doesn't have to do too much to enhance the photo because it was so damn bright. And yes, I'm an Englishman and it was too damn hot for me there. And I can only imagine how disappointed the Romans were when they finally got to England and realized how bad the weather is. Anyway, the AI is definitely doing a bit of sky recognition here. Most phones kind of enhance the blue to create a more pleasing look. However, the Nothing Phone 2 doesn't seem to be doing much of that. And if we focus on the Nothing Phone 2 and how it compares, you'll notice a boost in color saturation. This is creating kind of red tones and green tones on the brickwork. And this is probably due to that boost in saturation. But with that said, the details appear to be just as good as the top two flagships. And hey, here's another interesting fact about the Colosseum. See the bottom area down there? That used to be covered with wooden floors and then sand on top of that. And that would be the surface that the gladiators would fight on. But underneath were the holding cells. And also they used to keep wild animals down there and stuff like that, and props and all these kind of things. And actually the Romans once filled the arena floor with five feet of water to reenact some iconic boat battles. And congratulations, you just learned more about the Colosseum than I did on my 100 euro five minute tour. Okay, so now a selfie that probably a million people have taken before. And overall, it's a pretty nice picture except for the mug in the middle. But you'll notice on the Nothing Phone 2, the shadows are slightly crushed and a bit too much in my opinion. And you can see that in the dark areas of the photo. And I do believe the Galaxy S23 has nailed the skin tones perfectly. And I think it's the winner here. But do you know what I hate about all three of these photos right now? That dodgy smile on my face. I really need to practice on my selfie pose. And just before we move on, the iPhone seems to have made my face really quite red. Yes, I did get a suntan line on my forehead where my hat strap is. But besides that, I do not believe I was that red at that point in time. Okay, now this is the exact same picture, but in portrait mode. And you'll see the iPhone is doing a great job of edge detection. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra is also very impressive. The Nothing Phone 2 is indefensible in this particular mode. But there is one saving grace. Because the Nothing Phone 2 uses Google's Photos as the default gallery app, you can apply the blur effect after the fact, and the results are so much better than the actual Nothing Phone's portrait mode. Honestly, I don't know why it struggles so badly here, but I can promise you one thing, I did not try to make it look bad on purpose. Okay, let's check some fine details. It is 48 megapixels versus 50 megapixels versus 200. Don't make the mistake of thinking that more megapixels 
will win by default. There are so many factors that can affect the outcome. Most notably are the lens configurations, the lens materials, and of course the digital image processing, the AI. And it's important to know that the Nothing Phone 2 actually has the first generation Snapdragon 8 processor and the S23 Ultra has the latest one. So let's zoom right into this photo of the famous Roman Forum, which I know very little about thanks to my fantastic tour guide slash magician. In fact, he's a better magician than he was a tour guide because I've never seen someone vanish so quickly. Anyway, take a look and see what you think and let me know which one wins in this detailed test in your opinion. So hiking up the Palatine Hill outside the Colosseum in Rome is thirsty work. So here's a slow-mo of my cold victory beer that I had afterwards. Now let's test out the maximum zoom capabilities of these three champions. Okay, so you probably saw this coming, the Galaxy S23 Ultra's periscope zoom is unrivaled here. That lens configuration for zooming is certainly the best. And I think nothing knows the hardware's limit and doesn't allow it to zoom any further. And from what I can see, everything looks pretty sharp at that focal distance. The iPhone similarly stops at the point where the image might fall apart and the colors and contrast look very natural here. But what's really gonna blow your mind is the fact that the Galaxy has another 90X to go. So this is how that looks. Okay, so you heard the voice pickup quality in the intro and actually the Nothing Phone 2 did a really great job of background noise suppression. And you'll see what I mean if you go back and watch that intro again. But anyway, here's a little music test for the microphones. So listen here carefully and let me know which one sounds best to you. could be more challenging for camera AI scene detection than an ape covered in fluorescent paint. All three phones do well here. The Nothing Phone 2 does seem to lean into those crushed shadows again, but the highlights have been lifted slightly too high in this scenario in my opinion. And you can see that in the colors in the background. The iPhone has boosted the colors and the S23 Ultra has managed to brighten the image without losing the highlight details. And I do believe this might be another win for the Galaxy but I'm open to your arguments if you think otherwise. So let me know what you think. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now because I feel like I've been talking too much and I'm just gonna roll the next few and then I'll join you again for the night photos and some final thoughts.
Okay, I know I said I'll be back for the night shots, but I have to chime in on this one. This is a HDR, a high dynamic range test. This is the phone's ability to handle the harsh light and balance out the photo without losing all of the details in the shadows. And in this particular photo, the sun is in clear view and under the arch is a lot of engravings and detail. So let's zoom into that area and see what's going on. Now I know what I think, but I want you to tell me which phone in your opinion retains the best details in this HDR shot. And I think I know which one you're gonna pick. So leave a comment and I'll tell you if I agree or not. Okay, so let's kick off the night comparison with what I'm told was the greatest pasta in Rome from a restaurant called the Osteria da Fortunata. There's literally a lady sitting in the window rolling out the fresh pasta that you're about to eat. Pretty cool. And in this one, it is really close. Really, you could pick any of them, but I'm gonna pick the Nothing Phone 2 here for the color scheme. That contrasty look and dark shadows and slightly high saturation actually work well for a food shot like this. Okay, so I had to climb a fence and risk getting thrown into a Roman jail cell to take this photo for you guys. So if I could get a little thumbs up for that, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, this is an ultra wide shot. And on the left side of the photos, you'll see the Arch of Constantine that was built in 1315 AD. And on the right is the Colosseum, 72 AD. And you know what? I think I should be a tour guide. I'd be the best tour guide. Anyway, in ultra wide mode, you'll notice all three phones have very distinctive differences at night. All three actually do an excellent job of details. However, the Galaxy S23 seems to have quite a bit of digital noise in the image, but the colors are pretty good. The iPhone, in my opinion, has created the most eye-catching photo, but maybe the tones are a bit too warm, a bit too saturated. And actually, the Nothing Phone 2 has done the best job in night mode with the ultra-wide camera. Maybe it's that 50 megapixels that it uses that gives it the advantage. And it's even picked out a few stars in the night sky, which the others don't really seem to be seeing. Okay, so this is a very challenging night photo. The strong street light can cause many problems for smartphone lenses and image processors. If I had to pick my favorite photo here, it might be the Nothing Phone 2 again, despite the extreme lens flare and the fact that it's adding a lot of ghosting and purple flares in the sky. I picked this one because I actually like the warmer tones on the concrete here and my skin tone looks the most accurate. I'm a little bit too dark in the iPhone image and that's really highlighting my t-shirt tan which isn't a good look. And on the S23 Ultra, I've got a bit of a purple Thanos skin tone going on, which actually reminds me of a massive Android advantage. It is the Magic Eraser feature. Keep an eye on those people in the background and watch this. Now they're gone, vanished from existence. Like my very expensive tour guide. No doubt Apple will drop this feature soon and call it something very unique like it's never existed before. I wouldn't be surprised if they launched that with the next iPhone. But anyway, this trip to Italy got me thinking. Standing there outside the Roman Colosseum, I was thinking about the gladiators and the fact that most of them were criminals and generally not very nice people. And despite that, gladiators more often than not were not executed following a loss. In fact, they say most of the time the victorious gladiator would leave their opponent's fate to the crowd and the crowd would almost always unanimously decide to let them live live to fight another day. And that sounds like the title of the next Bond movie. And that reminds me of the time that I died in a Bond movie, Skyfall, whilst trying to kill Bond himself. Damn you, Judy Dench for that. And also, it got me thinking about if the sky should actually fall one day, maybe we would be forced to live closer to the ground, like the last of the dinosaurs, the crocodiles. And that got me thinking how maybe once upon a time before the meteor hit and wiped out the dinosaurs, it could have created a sudden change in gravitational pull. And before that happened, maybe the crocodiles used to stand on two legs, like a T-Rex. And maybe at that time, they were known by a different name. <laughs> <laughs> and you might be wondering, what the hell has that got to do with this video? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Don't be late. <laughs>